Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, December 18, 2020. This is the week in charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I appreciate it very much and humbled by your presence. So what are we talk about? Well, let's talk about current market conditions. Lots to talk about there. The market is, it looks so great. It scares me. I, I, I caught myself sounding a little too bullish in the service tonight. And it makes me wonder if we do for a little bit of a correction. I hope not, but we probably are. We'll get to all that. Last week, I tried to do a show on IPO treasure hunting. And I was kind of hinting throughout the show for people to write the stocks down. And I thought to myself, I'll just write them all down when I do the, the editing. And the ones that I like, that is, and the ones that were set up going into last Friday. And the recording didn't take. So that's frustrating. So hopefully somebody can hear. And if you did, please let me know. We could pick it up, pick up this discussion on Friday in the Facebook group. I'd love to know if anybody actually took some notes as to what IPOs I liked and which ones were set up and whether or not they traded them and whether or not they worked out. I was doing my IPO analysis tonight. I noticed that I'd see a good looking setup. And I'm like, damn, I hope I didn't miss that. And then come to find out, I actually didn't. There were a few I missed because you can't kiss all the women, but for the most part, if you want any follow-up information, if you're watching this on YouTube, davidlearner.com slash free, I'll give you my books, all three of them in PDF format, and enough stuff to keep you busy for a really long time. If you're just seeing it on December 18th, give me a day or so, you will be put into the queue, but it might take a day or so to finish everything. There's a can there's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading, or as often summing up, all predictions about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then I think I forgot to mention, just wait until we get to the charts before you ask about individual stocks and then also ask about one at a time. And tonight, since it's kind of a free format, if you have any questions in general, feel free to ask them on the fly. So if you are a gold member of DaveLander.com, make sure you join the Facebook group. It is free and it's I think it's the biggest benefit of the membership. I know for me. I get a lot out of it. I get pretty good stocks out of it. I get to bounce some ideas off of you guys. I'm not the grand poo or anything. I've just been doing this for a while. I, I make a lot of mistakes. And what's the um, Ankara Amparo, I think is Michael. What, Michael I, might, I don't know if I have that right or not. That's Latin. It sounds a lot like um, Italian too, which means I'm still learning, like Michelangelo said when he, I think he was 80. The great thing is you could ask for help. I get a lot of individual questions and I ask people to ask them in the group. And to my surprise, a lot of times you guys chime in with the answers. You could also see the signs and signals as they occur for things like bow ties and TFM systems. And some of you guys uh, do a lot of market analysis and, and, and are kind enough to publish this. I pre appreciate that. Also, opening gap reversal type trades. I do put those out as I am contemplating them and as sometimes when I'm taking them. All right, let's jump into the charts. So what we're going to do is I want to jump straight into the charts and start looking at IPOs. And before we do that, I want to do a quick market update. And then I want to show you how I actually find IPOs. And I did a similar presentation, somewhat similar, at least based on what we did last week. And it didn't take for stockcharts.com. And that'll be posted on my website too, davelander.com. Just go straight to the homepage on that. So let's just take a look first at what's going on in the overall market. Let's get through that quickly so I can hop straight into the IPOs and see if we can find some for our Friday. And maybe one of you guys or girls would be kind enough to write them down as we find them, if we find any good ones, that is. All right, let's just take a look at a few sectors in the overall market real quick. SP 500, bam, winning. It's hard to not look at this market and, and not talk like tiny yellow. Look at that market, it's huge. Uh, look at that, look at that. Broke out to all-time highs today. Uh, not an extreme amount of vigor, but hey, all-time highs nonetheless. Not gonna argue with that. NASDAQ composite, a little bit more vigor there, up nearly 1% all-time highs there too. Take a look at the Rusty, look at the Rusty, it's huge. It's up a uh, percent and a quarter almost today alone. All-time highs. There, gold, the commodity making uh, one heck of a comeback in here. Let's throw the bow ties in there. There you go. You can see bow tie moving averages come together quickly as they will when the close gets above the moving average, especially those exponential moving averages. They turn quickly. 
the 10, which is a simple moving average, 10 simple, 20 exponential, 30 exponential. The 10 turns fairly quickly, but sometimes it takes a little bit of time to turn. And, then, and by the way, the lag is sort of a feature that makes the bow tie actually work. If you use all exponential moving averages, you'll find that sometimes it gets a little noisy, but having that 10 kind of with a little bit of lag really helps catch tops and bottoms. It's one of my favorite patterns. I guess every pattern I trade is like, oh, that's my favorite pattern. <laughs> Energies have been doing really, really well as of late. As I've been saying, John Lewis gave a speech at the TSAFF back before COVID, back last October, I think, and I was also speaking there. And I really enjoyed his speech. He talked about momentum and how value becomes momentum. And this is one of those cases. What I was hoping for in the energies was were for them to bottom out just forever and die. My favorite pattern is when energies come down, bottom out forever, die out, and then rise from the ashes. And I actually call that the Phoenix pattern or Phoenix strategy. Anyway, you could see they look pretty good though. And we are along CPE in the energy. Some new sectors are waking up here like the foods. I find that kind of interesting. That tends to be a more defensive area, but hey, we'll take it. And the other thing, and, and John Lewis was saying that value becomes momentum. And here we go. I, all these years I've been trading value when it becomes momentum and not knowing, without knowing that value becomes momentum at times. And the point I'm trying to get to, as you'll see when we get to some of the hotter sectors, is that the market is beginning to fire on all eight cylinders. We've got value becoming momentum, which makes it momentum. And we have old momentum, which is becoming new momentum. Again, like the drugs, look at that. Bring it, break it out to brand new highs. They were kind of wide and loose for a while. But then they had the mother of all up days and then kind of meandered a little bit, finally broke out with vigor. And Tiny Elvis is pretty excited about biotech. Look at that. Look at that trend there. It's huge. All time highs and biotech materials and construction. Boring little area. We're long SPG here or APG. I forget. APG. It's been boring us to death. But hey, you know what? It's the biggest winner in my portfolio right now. A sleepy little construction company is doing the best. Hey, that's kind of that value thing becoming momentum, I guess. We'll have to ask John Lewis. Anyway, all-time highs there. Nice little breakout on Vigor today. So that's certainly a good thing. Software has just been all over the place, but look at that. Bam, winning, breaking out to all-time highs with a little bit of uh, Vigor. What's interesting is, take a look at silver. All of a sudden, it decided to melt up, no pun intended. And now the bow ties, believe it or not, are in uptrend proper order pretty quickly. Little overhead supply to get to, but so far, so good there. Gold stocks, I wouldn't rush out and buy them just yet, but they're popping higher with the underlying commodity. Lots of overhead supply to deal with. So this would be one of my least favorite areas. As you know, I was a little bearish on gold about a week or so ago, and I didn't get around to shorten them, or maybe two weeks ago, and maybe even going back a little further. You can go back and look at the service archives, davelander.com slash archives to see whether it was bullish or bearish. And I just... Couldn't bring myself to short the goals. And there were so many longs that looked fantastic that, you know what, I'm just going to stay long for now and not even bother with the short side. And I was lucky that I did. Now, sometimes I regret that decision because sometimes you really have to listen to the market. And speaking of listening to the market, silver, which is melting up in here, there was an IPO, which I'm sure will come up in the scans. Gatto, I completely ignored because I didn't like the action in silver itself. And maybe that stock was trying to tell me something. Okay. Any thoughts or questions about the market? Anybody else want to chime in with anything? And then uh, we'll hop into the IPOs. Okay. There were a couple of things I was doing when I was getting the chart show set up, set up, and I got to thinking it might be of more value to you if I did that setting up on the fly. So this is how I do it in telecharts. There's uh, a different way of doing it in um, stockcharts.com where you can see more charts at one time. And there's another way of doing it in FinViz. For the FinViz, every now and then I'll do a video in my Yahoo group. So I'll do another one of those, hopefully fairly soon. But if not, you can dig through the group and find the old video I did. Now, the way you could create an IPO list in telechart and already have one working but let's just say you want the last 10 days of ipos i would go back at least 90 days when you're doing this process and 
as I said before, even after a year and sometimes two years, especially if they if they bottom out and kind of have that Phoenix action bottoming out for a long time, they could offer some great opportunities. But anyway, pick whatever time frame you want and find an indicator that requires that many days. So for instance, I use a close minus 10, which is which is meaningless. It's, I'm just tricking the database, C minus C10. Okay, that's today's close minus 10 closes ago. Okay, so that takes 10 or 11 days to calculate. So I'll get the last two weeks or so of IPOs. Now I've already ran this before for the last 90 days or so. So I know I have those 90 days. I just wanna pick up the last 10 days. And the way we do that is we sort it by the sort, okay? And everything with 10 days or more is gonna to be toward the top of the screen. And everything with 10 days or less will be toward the bottom. And I'm just gonna go ahead and unflag all my symbols, okay? Go down to the bottom. By the way, if you do wanna to go to the telechart route, I, I do use telechart because it's quick and dirty. I use a lot of different tools, Telechart, Metastock, Finviz. If you click on the link on my website, it'll bring you to the list of the links for those products. And if you if you go with Telechart, all I ask is that you just use my affiliate link and it won't cost you any more. In fact, there's actually a special where you actually get some benefits by doing that. So we're gonna flag all below this symbol here. What, this is the last one in the list that had enough days to calculate. So basically, we're looking for the rejects. And this is just a little trick I figured out to find the latest stock. So we'll copy to another list. And again, if you go to the, um, if you watch, keep an eye on my website tomorrow, daylander.com, and you'll see the show that I did for stock charts which is gonna be somewhat similar to this one. And I just kind of scratched the surface of the scanning there, but I'm gonna pick it up uh, when we return. Probably won't be till next year. By the way, this is the last show for a couple of weeks. Next week is Christmas Eve. Got some family obligations. And the following week is New Year's Eve. I have some drinking obligations. <laughs> I'm half kidding. No, I'm not. All right. So this is the IPO list for our last 90 days, probably 100 days, a little bit more by now because I created a few uh, week or so ago. So because there's so many in it, look how many stocks have come public recently, 372, okay? And there's a lot of ETFs in here. We're going to toss those out. And I used to toss out the, yeah, close minus average 10, same thing, John, that'll work. Any, any, It doesn't matter because like, like when I want 90 days, I sort of by 90 day volume, okay? Every now and then I just kind of blow up my list and start from scratch and I'll sort of by 90 day volume and I just take the rejects after that, okay? Yeah, that's that's fine. So I need to sort them by something in here just to kind of, because there's so many to go through. Now on my own, I usually go through all 400 of them and, and quite a bit more usually, but just just for sake of not having to go through a lot of crap tonight, let's do this, let's sort them by, and this is something I do, if I'm in a hurry, as I have been lately. Let's sort them by one day volume. And this way we get the most volatile stocks first over roughly the last 90 days. I guess what, I'll, what I could do tonight is actually flag them. I am already long this one. I've been long this one forever. And I think I bought options on it at some point in time and then ended up getting exercise back into it. But this one set up way back here. I've done plenty of presentations on this one. This was a buy at B type of setup. I'll, I'll walk you through the buy at B as they show up. This one only has two days. Remember the buy at B rule, we can't buy until the close of day five. Stock comes public on Monday. The earliest we could buy is when? Friday at the close, okay? Here's a three days. We don't do anything with that. Now, this is kind of interesting, but it was up 333% today. So I would leave that alone. Now, we do have the one day rule, which means that if day one sets a high for the week, which it did in this particular case, it not only has to close at a new closing high, which it did today, it also has a close above that high. So it did not close above that high, but this one might be worth watching. I guess we're gonna flag them tonight. Only one day there, nothing to do. Now, as I say, as I say ad nauseum, 
wait until at least five days, the close of the fifth day before getting into an IPO, provided it's making a new closing high and above the day one high. And as many times as I say that, people, some who should know better, what do you think about Airbnb? What do you think about Dash? And this is like three days ago, four days ago. Some of them before questions I got, before they even came public. I have no idea. We need to wait to see how the public responds to them. Remember, we're not trading fundamentals. We're not trading ideas like, oh, people are going to rent Airbnbs and, you know, no, or VRBOs or whatever. We're looking to see what the psychology is of the market is based on the charts. Now, this one closed at a new closing high today, but it's not above the day one high. Also, my rule is if the price too high, they're going to die. So I kind of got tripped up in the way I explained this yesterday in my uh, stock chart show. The underwriter, when they bring these public, they'll they'll come up with a price, and then if they open too high, they tend to die as a as a general rule. And the reason is they they need to leave some meat on the bone, okay, so that people and pre investors etc can can get out and so the public will have some interest in it because it's continuing to go up without them okay and it's not enough time to get into it tonight but without getting into a lot of details there's manipulation that happens in IPOs which is wonderful for us this is another one of those this, now this is an acquisition company you can see a lot of these tonight this one just kind of gapped way higher out of a base. So I'm not going to really go after this one. It's kind of a funky looking chart. We're only two days into this one and it's above $20 a share, which I don't know if I fully flesh that out on the Airbnb. But you want to buy them ideally if they're less than $20 a share. And lately I've bumped that up to about $25. And I think the, the most I've paid for an IPO on the buy it B pattern was like, um, I think it was maybe $28, $29 recently. But usually I like to, to buy them when they're uh, early in the process. Now let's just go back to this one real quick. So let me just see if we could get this thing to, see if I can get this thing to draw real quick. And if I can figure it out. Okay. So keep in mind that we're talking a lot about the buy a B pattern, which means that we're buying on the first close, the first new closing high, which would be right here. Now this would trigger a little late, so it's not the best example, but tonight I'll show you, we'll get into some that triggered like on day five, okay? And I'll show you some of those that I'm actually long. I'll show you every stock that I'm long tonight in the IPOs as they come up. So this would be what I call a pioneer pattern. Like the American pioneers, you either get the gold or the arrows, okay? It's stuck in your back. But the chance of going for the gold makes it all worthwhile. Now, let's say Airbnb sets up later, okay, as a secondary setup. So, like, again, Pioneer might be way back here. But then after a few weeks or so, you might have a first deep retracement, which is another one of my IPO patterns that I like to trade. Or you just might have uh, just kind of a generic look at pullback. Now, forget about this gap for a second, okay, because I'm not a big fan of going up the stocks when they gap down like this. But if we didn't have this gap, this would be a secondary setup, entry probably about right there, okay? So that starts looking more and more like the further out you get in time, the more and more it looks like the core methodology. As a general statement, your buy at B is gonna be back here somewhere, okay? But they can take a while to trigger. I've seen them take as long as a year to trigger, and that's when a stock kind of makes this Phoenix pattern, starts making new highs, closing at new highs, and that is a really good pattern to trade, okay? But I, the author's intent, it's funny, you come up with something and then you watch it for years and years and trade it for years and years, and you get a feel for some of the nuances to it. And that's one of the nuances that, is that even though it's a pioneer pattern, it might work three years down the road, which is really cool. But in general, the pioneer patterns such as buy a B, first deeper tradesment, or designed, or the intent, the author's intent, were to capture an IPO as soon as possible. So let's get back to where we were. Now, here's a case where this thing, uh, the buy at B would have been back here somewhere, but it didn't look like you had enough volume or whatever. But now it's beginning to set up as a secondary setup. So put this one in your list. 
it needs a little bit more pullback, maybe below 13, okay? It's another one of these stupid acquisition companies. As I said last week, it didn't get recorded, so I'll go ahead and repeat myself. When I did the IPO course in 2014, I said, hey, you know, just throw out all these acquisition companies, it's BS. Well, right now, that's the hottest thing in hot time, town. And I know I'm repeating myself a lot in a lot of this stuff, but I'm reading Devil's Take the Hindmost, and then he talked about the tulip mania and how people are spending all this money on tulips. And right now, I'm into the South Sea bubble, and what a disaster that is, okay? But these bubbles, you can ride these bubbles for a long time. I love these bubbles. And I think if you I judge it from your Facebook profiles, <laughs> who is it? What do you guys update your profile? I thought I really thought you were in your 20s, and all of a sudden you update your profile, you're like 50. It's like you had an old profile picture. I guess I'm guilty with my headshots and all, but um I never thought I'd be that guy. I'm like, I don't feel like going out and get a new headshot. But anyway, you're old enough to remember the dot-com bubble and you can make a lot of money in bubbles, and bubbles are absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, here's one, J-U-P-W. I thought this one might trigger on the close. The high was not set on day one. One, two, three, four. We took out that high. We've got okay range. One thing that I haven't really wrapped my head around is that these lower price IPOs, I'm not sure if they're as worthwhile going after as, let's say, those that are a little bit above ten dollars a share so that's something i really haven't fully fleshed out but if this thing closes somewhere in fact actually today it was a buy and b i don't know, think about it okay not by much okay usually you want to make sure it's a good solid close above that close but technically today this was a buy at b let's take a look at the volume yeah the volume is pretty light on this one and that's one of the things that's a little tricky is that you have to look at the individual days. So volume's kind of light on that one. That one could have been tough to trade, but technically going into tomorrow, December 18th, that could trigger tomorrow. Okay, we got two days in this one, upstart. What do we do with it? Nothing, wait till day five. And here's another thing. First day high on JP, JUPW? No, first day was not the high. This high took it out, okay? So the first day high does, rule does not apply, okay? As long, within the first five days, as long as one high takes out the first day high, I should say within the first four days, okay? Then that high, you no longer have to worry about the new high rule on that, okay? And I think, not the last week at Bandcamp here, but the stock charts video, which I should put up tomorrow, uh, when IPOs should uh, take care of that. Yeah, no problem, John. It's it's sometimes you you squint your eyes and you miss these little things. Okay, nothing to do here, and it won't be a buy at B even on day five because it's higher price. Doesn't mean that it might not be worth trading down the road though. Okay, DoorDash so far has been a turd. This is another one that people asked me about before it came out on day one, on day two, on day three, day four. I sound like Monday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> You can see so far it's turned into a turd. Well, what did I what did I say earlier? I don't know why I'm talking like Tiny Elvis tonight. Price too high. What? They're gonna die. Okay. Now it doesn't mean six months from now this thing's scraping around the lows and all of a sudden bow ties or something or makes a stealthy new closing high, maybe sets up as a pullback and starts rallying the new closing highs. It might be worth a shot. Okay. Now this one new high was set on day one for the first week. In fact, so far it's the all time high. So I would leave this one alone. There's nothing to do there, but maybe it might turn into some sort of secondary pattern. Another one that's kind of bottoming out in here could turn into a bow tie or something secondary. So might be worth keeping an eye on that one. Now this one shot up. I don't remember if I took the trade or not. I don't think I did. I think I cursed myself on this one and I don't remember why I didn't take it, but day one, day two, day three, day four, Day five, I think, you know what it was? The range wasn't enough. And I'll, I'll check my trades. Let me make a note. I can't just, I can't remember whether I took it or not. And I'll let you guys know tomorrow. By the way, if I forget to tell you some of these things, just remind me. Now, here's one that I actually took and made a little money on, better than the poke in the eye, and got stopped out. Okay, day one. Okay, that's the new high for the week so far. Day two, day three, day four. So this is the high we're working with. First close above it, right there. 
one, two, three, four, five. And so I went long, I think on that day. And then I cashed out and I got stopped out somewhere in here, okay? And then I did not ride it all the way back down. That's the thing, the other thing, I'm just gonna kind of back into a few little concepts here. One is the fly and the die pattern. Okay, and this is what I would call a fly and a die. That's okay. You can make a lot of money in this fly phase. And sometimes this fly phase lasts a long time. In this case, obviously it did not. So that was kind of a cool one to play. And it's taken me a while, but I'm learning to be, you know, what's the old saying? You tell the kids, you get what you, you get, what you, get you don't throw a fed. It's like, you know, I'd rather make 1% on a trade like this overall and put that money in my pocket than to not make any money at all. You know, so be happy with what you get. And the other thing I've been doing a little bit lately, I was talking about this, you know, not the last week at Bandcamp, but in the group, I was talking about that I recently listened to the Peter Brandt inter interview on, uh, on from um, Unknown Market Wizards, and he only tracks closed capital. So I found... You know, one of my problems has been lots of F-bombs when stopped out in that second loaf at a scratch, but I have found in more recent times, I'm actually feeling pretty good because I'm like, okay, well, at least I've got, at least I added some money, some closed money to my equity column on that, closed equity. And his point was that he tracks the closed equity versus the open equity because he's not marking to market and, and considering that his money. He considers that the market's money until he closes out the trade. All right, what do we have here? Okay, so today was a buy, right? Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. You should have bought this stock on the close, right? Am I right? No. No, because it's higher price. Okay, it's up in the 40s. We're going to wait for a secondary setup. But yeah, put that on your watch list, C-E-R-T. I'm sorry if I'm not naming these if you can't see them on your screen. C-E-R-T on that. Okay, what do we have? We have more than a week's worth of trading. Okay, the high was not set on day one, but look at the price. Price is too high. So we're going to wait for a secondary setup, the first pullback or whatever. I don't know what this is. It's kind of odd looking, but it went from 12 to 26. So we'll have to do some research and find out did this come public on this day here? Is this legitimate back here? And that's one thing you have to go in and do a little homework nowadays because these companies are kind of funky. In some cases, I think they might buy out these companies and start a shell company or something. Uh, this is just kind of funky, just because it's one huge day, it's a dollar a share, so blow that off. This one looks pretty good, okay? I don't know if you can read the symbol or not, I'm not gonna tell you the symbol, because it's a setup going into tomorrow. What is it? A first deep retracement. Some of you guys are already long. I know you front ran the signals. I have to personally wait for an it. That's, that's the downside sometimes of showing you guys these things in the service because it kind of handicaps me and, and something like this, I might be a little anxious to jump the gun a little bit, front run the setup, but I can't do it. You you guys can, and some of you guys are already long. Uh, I wish you the best and I'm gonna get long with you when the trigger triggers based on the service. But yes, that is a first deep retracement, looking good. Now this thing came public day one, imploded. There's nothing to do there. If it begins to close above the day one high, we might reevaluate it, but I doubt it just based on the way it looks so far. All right, what do we do here? Day one, day two, day three. So two more days, we might be looking to buy. No, because we're above we're about $20 a share. And I guess the new rule is above $25 a share, 25 and change, okay? But this might be worth watching for a secondary setup. Okay, what do we have here? Day one, day two, day three. Day one set the high for the week, so you got to close above day one high. What did it do today? It closed at a new high. Okay. Did I take the trade? No. I consider. I think I considered it, but the the volume was kind of light in here. Now we had a really big volume day today, and it's one of those cases where I haven't fully fleshed out what to do with the cheap IPOs, and I know that. Pigs are beginning to fly in this market, but technically this was a buy today on the close at 475, 474. Um, if any of you are looking at your charts and after hours, see what the spread is on that. I'd be real interested in uh and in, in knowing that just to see what's happening there. Okay, uh this from a technical perspective is below a ton of overhead supply. 
once you have quite a few days, then you can start doing the overhead supply. Reason I asked you guys to check that in after hours is because last, well, two weeks ago or something, we were looking at some stocks and one of you guys entered in after hours and did pretty good. Yeah, uh, Raj, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll take a look at gold and silver stocks. Sure. 20 cents spread in after hours? Yeah, that's too much. That's too much. All right, what do we have here? Uh, buy at B would have been back here. The range was fairly small. It's kind of all over the place. Let's see if it could rally and then maybe look to play a pullback on that one. Okay. Now this one looks pretty good. This is a good secondary setup, okay? So it comes public, dies out, nothing to do there, right? But then it takes off and then it begins to pull back. I would have preferred a little bit deeper pullback. Now, sometimes this is where it gets tricky. Sometimes IPOs don't give you the luxury of pulling back enough for a setup. What's the max spread that I would buy? It depends on the price of the stock. If it's a $4 stock at a 20 cent spread, no, I'm not gonna do it. But if it's a $20 stock at a 20 cent spread, I'm okay with that. So it all depends. So when we start looking at them, we could uh, we could certainly talk about that. I seem to remember buying this one at some point in time. I think it was a different symbol. And somehow I got knocked out of it, I think. Uh, but nothing to do here. If it pulls back again, it might be worth a shot. That's DMYD. All right, what do we do with this turd? Nothing, because what, what, what's, what's happened? It's just gone down, okay? There's nothing to do there. And when I did the IPO course, I talked about Will Rogers, who said, buy stocks that go up. If they don't go up, don't buy them. Well, he's being tongue in cheek, but guess what? It actually kind of works that way in IPOs. And that's one of the great things about IPOs. Uh, VMAR is kind of interesting. High on day one. Let's see what happens. If it closes above this high here, it would be a buy. So it might be worth a shot. So that might be worth putting on your watch list. This could be like PLTR, where it just kind of came public and went sideways and died out a little bit, and then all of a sudden woke up. So everybody kind of forgets about it, and then all of a sudden it starts breaking out. Everybody's screens light up, and you're already there and ready. All right, what do we do with this? The high was not set on day one, was set on day two. That's fine. So now we have a new closing high. Anything above about, um, let's get an exact reading on that. So anything above, let's just say 19, okay, would be a an entry on this one. If it doesn't go to 19, if it doesn't close at 19, then what do you do? Nothing, okay? So I think it'd be kind of cool. And John, we were kind of, I was kind of hinting at this last week. If somebody would go in and make a spreadsheet of these, it's like I've, I've threatened before, just to rewind things a little bit, get everybody to the speed. As I've said quite a, quite a few times, when I did my IPO course, I wanted to do an IPO course, and then I waited and waited and waited because I knew as soon as I did an IPO course, the IPO bull market would end. And that was like in 2010, I thought about it, and 11, and 12, 13. I probably got around to doing it in 2014, while well, the whole time collecting a lot of data for what I wanted to show. And here we are six years later, knock on wood, and the IPO bull market is still, still strong. Now, there's been some ups and downs in between, and obviously, when we had some bear markets, the IPOs weren't, do, weren't doing that good, but there was nothing to do with them because they were just going down, okay? So, yeah, what I was hitting at last week is uh, back when I did the IPO course, I'm like, I really should do an IPO service. Of course, I'm spread kind of thin. And same sort of thinking there. As soon as I do an IPO service, IPOs are gonna stop being the hottest thing in hot town. <laughs> and that was six years ago. When's the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. When's the second best time? Today. <laughs> YSG, okay, high was not set on one, day one based on this. You got okay range, $20 down to 15, but nothing to do yet because it's going down, right? So yeah, if it closes above, let's say 2050 or maybe even 2025, closes around that area, then it might be worth a shot. Here is a stock, is there a stock that, yeah, is there a stock that invests in IPOs? Yeah, and it's, um, you know, what's, what's fascinating to me is, and I would never throw anybody in the bus, but I remember when I did the IPO course, there was a stock that invested in IPOs, and it did it did horrible, absolutely horrible, and I think that's the same one. And uh, and now it's doing pretty good. It's There was one 
want to say it's IPOB Renaissance or something. And it's doing really well now, I think, because a lot of these these higher volume IPOs are doing really well. Now, I didn't do anything with this one. It did make a new closing high, but it was too high to buy, okay? It's, it's sort of all over the place. It hadn't done anything wrong, but it hadn't done anything right just yet. So we'll have to start making new highs and then come back. IPO is a symbol? Is that Renaissance? Yeah, it was called IPO something else. But you can see, yeah, this looks fantastic, right? But I remember, let's see if we can get 2014 in here. I remember thinking that, not to throw anybody under the bus, I think it was called something else. I don't know if we can go all the way back. Yeah, here's 2014. When I did my IPO course, this thing was just, it just was abysmal, okay? And then 2015, look what happened, just horrible, okay? And all the while, I was finding all these great IPOs. So I guess as a small, nimble trader, I think you can go and do IPOs. And I think, as I said last week, I was talking with one of you guys and we were kind of noodling an IPO fund. And, you know, I think maybe 5 billion might be the most you can do, if that much, but it'd be kind of lucrative. I think it, I think it would work, but you can't, I don't think it could be like the Renaissance and in, in longer term, I don't think their performance is going to be that fantastic. Although it's working now, maybe here's an idea. Maybe if you want to ride the IPO wave and if, the Renaissance IPO, IPO, simple IPO is going up, then by all means, ride the wave there, but just have a chair ready when, when things change. Because as you know, they can change quickly. All right, day one set the high on this one, P-A-Y-A. -A, and right here was not above that day one high. So this would have been a buy two days ago. I think this one is still viable, okay? So it's still a buy on that one. Why am I not long? Well, I've got a lot going on right now, and I've got a lot of positions on, so I'm being super selective in anything new. Here's another one that is a low, low price one. I'm not sure what to do. My experience has been a lot of these low price IPOs don't really do that well, at least long enough to make some money on them. But yeah, it had a pretty good day today. It did not close above the day one high, so it's not a buy yet, but tomorrow, if it closes above the day one high, this is LXT, I'm sorry, L-I-X-T, then it might be worth a shot. Somebody write that down, just saying. But that's a low price one, so it wouldn't be as excited. This one, three days in, what do we need? Five days, okay. It's also a REIT. I know REITs have been doing okay lately, but it's hard to get excited about a REIT. I did buy a bank, which should come up soon in the scans. Usually not excited about banks, but banks, as I showed earlier, or the new momentum, okay? Value is a new momentum as of late. Three days in, day five, we're probably not gonna go after it. Well, we're not gonna go after this one because one, the range is not there. It's only about three or four point range, 10% range, that's not enough. And it's above $30 a share. It's about $20 a share, I should say. Now this one made a first deep retracement. I didn't play it because it was just crazy volatile. Um, I cursed myself a little bit, okay? And first deep, first deep retracement, it's usually a secondary pattern, but every now and then you can get a, a first deep retracement that triggers before a buy at B triggers. In this case, I think it did, or right around the same level, even though we don't take the high price buy at Bs. But yeah, this could have been a really, I think some of you guys in here played it. It was a pretty good run higher and it came right back in. It should have been on my Landry list. If you go back and look at the archives, I'd be willing to bet. I'd, I'd bet a hundred bucks, but if everybody took the bet, that would be a lot. <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> In my experiences, nobody pays up. Everybody wants me to pay, but nobody pays up. Anyway, <laughs> sounds like sour grapes, huh? But yeah, it had a pretty good run higher. And if you use a liberal entry and liberal stop and liberal IPT, you probably could have gotten something out of it. And I think some of you guys did. Chime in if you did. Let me know. All right, here you go. Here's another one of those holding companies. I don't know if it's an IPO company, but it is IPOF. Uh, high was set on day one. We probably need to dig a little further and find out that if this is a fund. If it's a fund, we're probably going to leave it alone. But it would have to close above 13. So let's just see what happens there. But nothing to do there just yet. Now, as I said earlier, these acquisition companies, earlier, uh, earlier in 2014, I said toss them all out. But now they're beginning to look a little interesting. Spox, SPAC, Special Purpose Acquisition Companies, are hotter than hot. Okay. Dave, so right on DMYT, good for you. 
Yeah, I don't know if I, I think I played that one. Was it a different symbol? I don't remember. I know I, ha, I know I have a client that that texts me every day. Every time it goes up five points, are you still in DMYT? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Go away. Uh, anyway, INAQ acquisition company. This one's kind of interesting. I, I would, I guess, ignore this going back. I would check it on a couple of data feeds to see what's going on. Did it truly come public on this day? If it did, one, two, three, four, five. Did it close above this close here? It's got okay range. Would be an entry. Okay, INAQ. So let's flag that one. Now that one looks kind of funky. I'm not sure what's going on there. So let's just pass on that one for now. Um, this one doesn't have much range. That's only about a one point range. So let's wait for some range to develop there. This one's kind of interesting. It came public, died out, and now it's kind of rallying, but being above $30 a share, it's not going to be a buy at B, but maybe on a pullback. Now, I know some of you do trade these higher price buy at Bs to each his own, but you might be onto something. Right now, the market's so damn hot, that might be a good buy at 32 and change, okay? That's MRVI. TLS, I am long, okay? And this is one of the things I was discussing this morning or last night, I forget when. So one, two, three, four, five, we've got five days in. High was set on day one, when do we buy? Well, I didn't think the range was enough, but this thing expanded higher to increase the range. So I bought right there, okay, on that close. And it failed miserably at first. Now, one thing I've been noticing is that these buy at these tend to work or they don't, right? So the case like some of these buy at these, it's like, okay, well, let's just get out of the way and wait for them to come back. I, I think you're making too many decisions when you try to do something like that. You could end up chasing your own tail. Uh, let me make a note. I'm going to show you one here. In fact, I could show you right now. I can show you one where it wouldn't have worked exactly like this, but yeah, it seems like if they die out, and I think one of you guys, unfortunately, he's not in the Facebook group. He doesn't do Facebook. And I tell him to sign up as his dog, and he's, he still won't do it. But you know, publish the research there. He's got, he does a lot of research, and I bet this is something he's probably looked into. And empirically, it does seem like if the buy B doesn't work, you get out of the way. But I'm not ready to change my whole trading methodology, okay, just on that. Uh, the danger would be you get out on – first couple of days of weakness, and then the next day just gaps higher, keeps on going, or you don't get around to getting back in. But yeah, I would have re-triggered here, and then I'm still long. I actually was, uh, my stop was at 19, believe it or not, okay? And I put in hard stops on one, two, three, or four days, and thank God I didn't get stopped out. Trust me, and I've talked to, I've asked this question to big audiences, and usually a lot of hands go up. Anybody ever get stopped out to the penny? And then watch the stock take off without them. Yeah, everybody has. And if not, either you haven't been trading for a while, or you're lying. Now, here's one, as I've said quite a bit, a little higher than $20 a share. But I'm okay. You know, what's a new rule? Let's say $25. You have to be a little flexible. Don't toss your methodology out the window, but be a little flexible. So the buy, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Buy would have been on this day here. If you go and look at the archives on Facebook, I decided it passed. I just couldn't get excited about pool supplies. <coughs> now, excuse me. Now, keep in mind that I will take a secondary setup in, in something like this. I pass. Let's take a look at, um, let me just show you a couple things real quick while we're scanning. I passed on ASO back here. I couldn't get excited about a brick and mortar sporting goods store, okay? But that was a pioneer setup. But when it's set up again, I'm like, well, I'm a trend following moron. Okay, maybe the market knows something that I don't. So I took the trade back here or here, wherever it triggered. And it just so happened that today it actually hit the initial profit target. It came really close for a few days. So I won't completely throw it out like Leslie's because it's pool supplies. Remember, as I've said a thousand times, I made fun of Lululemon, Lululemon, however you say it, Lululemon. One of you correct me. I'm like, well, how do you know what it is? Anyway, it's a, well, I guess they make men's clothes now. Anyway, so Lululemon went up like 40% in a week, and I made fun of it because they made yoga clothes. But anyway, I will take that secondary setup. What I wanted to show you earlier is... 
FHT X, and this is one I am long. So my thinking was, as I posted in the group, was that if you buy a buy, if you buy a buy a B like this, and then it fails, you get out the way. Well, here's the problem: you buy it, it fails. You buy the re-entry, which would have been on this day here, it fails. You buy the re-entry, which would have been on this day here, it fails. So I don't know if this move here is going to make up for it, but now you're buying in here, or would you even go back? Would you go into it one, two, three, four times? I know I wouldn't. That would really be stressful. So you can't play both ends against the middle, or you'll end up chasing your own tail, possibly. But it's something I've observed, and I haven't fully given up on the concept yet, but it's going to take a lot of thinking and a lot of doing. And you know, maybe you could argue in a market like this where everything is working so damn well, not everything, but most everything is working so damn well, you could risk being knocked out of something like this, okay, and then just not bother and get back in, get getting back in because you've got three other ones that are set up coming into today. Okay, day two, above twenty dollars a share. What do we do? Nothing. Ooh, daddy like. Daddy actually played uh, open a gap reversal on this and lost money. But dang, how can you lose money? It opened at the low and it closed at a high. I know. I know. I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> The spread was too damn big on this thing, and uh, how big? You know, how big is too big a spread? Well, if you're trying to go in for day trade, and you got a one point spread, you're a hurting pop going in. Some day trades, you're lucky to get a point out of out of the trade, right? So I didn't like the spread, but the spread finally kind of narrowed, and I decided to get in, and it faked me out. And it, I did drop an f bomb on that one, and what pisses me off now, since I did the little. Peter Brandt thing, and I go off closing profits, is I had to log this in today's spreadsheet as a loss, and it was painful. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a route higher, it wasn't that easy, but I triggered in somewhere around here, and I stopped out somewhere around there, and it pronounced what a silent SH happens. As I preach, sometimes what you need to do is just trade the open to gap reversals, off a daily chart or ogres as we call them. Well, Dave, can you tell me more about these ogres? Go in and watch the presentation a couple of weeks ago. I think it's still on the homepage of my website. All right, this is another one of those capital things, narrow range, two days in, nothing to do just yet. Okay, this one, not a tremendous amount of range, but it's getting there. High was set on day one, so maybe above this day one high, we'll consider it. Okay, so that might be worth watching. Now, this thing, I don't know what's going on back here compared to the rest of it. So we need to figure that out. Um, if it was, if the IPO was on this day here, then it would have to close above that high, which it has not done yet. Okay, what do we do with this one? Well, this one came public and then died. But it could turn into the mother of all Phoenix patterns. The only problem is buck 40 a share. Eh, we'll have to wait and see how that one shakes out. Okay, this one just kind of died out. It's a REIT, kind of hard to get excited about a REIT, but it's beginning to wake up. Let's see what happens, okay? Let's see if it could close at a new closing high. Looks like the high was set on day one, so it'd have to close above that high. Let's see what happens when it happens or if it happens. Now, this one looks kind of interesting. The range isn't tremendous, but it's okay. It's $27, so it could be a buy at B. Day one did not set the high, okay? So we toss out the day one rule. Day two, the closing high was set, I believe, or actually on day one, two, three, four. So closing high was set here for the first week. So technically, it did trigger here, but only by a hair. In a case like this, I would not take that trigger. I like to see a nice solid trigger. So the re-trigger, let's say a 28 and a quarter, might be worth a shot on that one, SHC. Nothing to do here. It's going up nicely on a pullback. It's more of a core methodology type of setup. Um, don't know what's going on with this crazy bar here, but this is trying to kind of wake up in here. So we'll see. It's only had two two bars straight up, though, so that's got to be a little bit of concern. I think you can follow through to the upside and then pull back, maybe, on that one. Greenwich Life Sciences. I think I've seen this. This company has reinvented itself or something. It went from 25 to 150 down to 42. Eh, 
That's too crazy. Look at the HV. Look at the HV is huge. 556. <laughs> too crazy. One of my friends, he just recently started trading and and he got into a stock HV of 100 or something, 150. You know, stocks up 50 cents. And he's like, I'm up 20 percent. You know, it's like, well, that's nothing. That's just a that's a fart in a window unit. You know, it's just not, it's nothing. Well, I guess that's something. Uh, this looks good. Actually, would have been a buy on the close today. This one's kind of tricky though. The range was real narrow, and then today it makes the big close. And let me check the volume. I think the volume was a little questionable. Yeah, there's there's quite a few days in here where the volume was really, really, really light. But then you had kind of a heavy volume day today. So this one's a little bit on the tricky side. It's not cut and dry, is what I'm trying to say. I could make an argument for or against this one, and actually for or against buying it on the close. So this looks okay. Let's see what we have here. We've got the high was set on what day? Day two. Okay, we got a new closing high. So anything above 19 will be an entry on this one, whatever this close is here, AAN, that might be worth a shot. That's like a rental rental company or something. Why? Well, you know, I'm not gonna confuse issue with facts. If the if it triggers, it might be worth a shot especially the fact that it it dropped first and now it's coming back, okay? And the reason I might buy a rental company as opposed to to a retail stock such as ASO is is ASO just kind of came public and went up. And my concern is when they when they're like uh, there's no story as I said in the IPO course, what's the story fat of glory? Well, maybe there is a story with ASO like I said last week at Bandcamp. I sold my dumbbells when we downsized just to, I didn't feel like moving them. They were heavy, you know? <laughs> really? Dumbbells are heavy? And I joined a gym and I was really enjoying going, going, uh, going to the gym and meeting people and everything. It's like, oh, I don't need those stinking dumbbells. And then of course, COVID hits. Gym managers actually texted me, please come back. I'm like, I will <laughs> eventually. Anyway, you know, maybe there's a story with Academy. Maybe they're selling the, the, the bejesus out of the hell out of uh, dumbbells or something. I don't know. I don't care. But it's working so far. So I'm riding along. Now, the point I was trying to make is if an IPO like Academy becomes public, it starts working its way higher. And there's no real story. It's not like a biotech or something. They're not splitting the atom, right? I'm probably not going to buy it because I wonder how long that rally can sustain itself. But in case like this stock here, it had its initial pop, it came back in, okay? So that drew a few people in and spit them out. The second entry, or what's gonna be the first entry actually, the first entry for my pattern, the second entry for people who are buying the breakout would be up here, might be a good, a good entry. So write that down, AAN, close above 19 and change, would be a buy tomorrow on the close. Okay, nothing to do here. Kind of a good example of why we don't buy the higher price IPOs. It doesn't always work this way. If it did, it'd be great, right? High was set on day one. Your buy would have been on this day here. It absolutely imploded afterwards, okay? Well, notice it's above $30 a share, okay? Above $20 a share. So 25 is about my cusp right now. Again, I pushed that a little bit, but in this case, I did not take this trade. All right, what do we have here? GOVX. The buy B would have been right here. I don't know what the volume was back then, though. Let's see. Yeah, it had okay volume, not tremendous. Yeah, it's got some really, really thin days. So it probably was too thin to buy back there. Okay. But that would have been your buy B, and it just did absolutely nothing since. And then all of a sudden it took off, and then it came right back in. This is kind of a poster child for what could happen with these really low price IPOs. Okay. All right, this came public and then kind of kind of been dying out ever since. It's also above thirty dollars a share, or twenty dollars a share, twenty five dollars a share. I need to, I guess, I need to make a definitive rule: twenty five, maybe two thirty, but twenty five is now a new cutoff. All right, let's make that official. This looks like a, an acquisition company or something. Don't know what's going on, but we'll have to see if this is real trading back here, and then make a determination of whether or not it's worth going after. Trigger would be way up here, which would be closer to 30. So I'd probably pass on that one or would pass. This is an acquisition company, one point range, just not enough range for me to get excited about. Okay. 
I am long this stock here. Uh, this is the best looking stock in the world. Your, your kids' college funds, you know, just they're probably going to go to college anyway. And then I'll tell you what, what you could do is put all your kids' college funds in this and double the money and then just give half back to them because they're probably not going to go to college anyway. Okay. And then you have, then you have the same amount of money that you put for them and you have that too. I'm joking. Okay. Somebody said, take me out of context one time and, and Mr. Landry, did you say this? Yeah, but uh, no, no, no other questions. <laughs> of course, I'm joking. Now, here's a case where this is the other thing that's kind of I've been noodling with again lately is, okay, your buy B was right here, right? And then what, is, what has it done? It's kind of failed since. So do you get out and then take the next entry? For now, I am not going to do that. I try to force myself to make changes slowly to my core methodology. But I know a few of you saw the video I did already, which will be out in a few weeks. You're probably thinking, but Dave, you kind of you kind of went off the core methodology and nearly blew up, didn't you? It's like, well, yeah, I did, but that was something completely different. As far as my core methodology, I try to stick to it as much as possible. And I try to be really slow before making those changes. Go back to 2014 in the IPO course, I showed you countless examples of the first deep retracement. And I tell you at that point in time, I was not trading them, but eventually I might. And now is eventually has come true. I don't know when I started trading exactly, but I know it was a few years after that course. I was very slow to change. Okay. Buy B was on day five for Quell. Uh, let's see. Yeah, but you didn't have any range, Mike. Okay, Mike's right. Mike's got a good eye. One, two, three, four, five. Correct. You're Right you all, sir, as um, what's his name? Ed McMahon used to say. But back here, you didn't have any range, okay? So Mike's right. Day five would have been your buy right there, okay? Which actually, in this particular case, yeah, you probably could have even taken partial profits for sure, stopped out and being looking at look at it again for re-entry, okay? So Mike's right. Mike P is right. But I did not take it on that day, okay? I wish there was a way to record every single one of these that it didn't take, because I'm looking at thousand charts, thousand charts a night, so I can't, there's not enough time to make a note on every single one and why I didn't take the trade. But I'm pretty sure the range wasn't big enough for me with a one point range and a $10 stock, that's just not enough, okay? But on this day here, the range had begun to expand and it's a new closing high. I guess technically it's no longer a buy a B, it would be something else, a breakout, whatever. But yeah, I did get long that one. I give these Spocs more leeway on range. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, the Spocs were just crazy, crazy. And now it seems like they're they're flooding the market with them. And, and I'm having a harder time, especially with the more narrow range ones, okay? Well, Mike just said he gives them more leeway on range. Here's a Spoc. One, two, three, four, five. I suppose your entry would have been right there on this one, okay? But that range is really, really narrow. So for me to get excited about this is going to have to make a bigger range. And I guess that's like on the quell, what I'll do is let's say the buy at B is on a real narrow range, that trigger day. I, I just won't buy it, but I'll, I'll consider the next buy at B setup if it's a breakout and expansion of range. Remember, the buy at B is the closest thing I'll trade to a breakout. I don't trade, trade breakouts in the core methodology. But in IPOs, I will. At one point, I was just kind of thinking about, let's say you do have a high-priced IPO, like, is it A, B? What's A or B and B? Okay. One thing you can do, I don't know if I have enough days, one, two, three, four, five, is you can add a five-day moving average if you're really excited about getting in early. Okay. No, it won't plot. But you can add a five-day moving average, and you could say, okay, well, if it's really high price, it's going to have to also show acceleration and trend by the low being greater than that high, okay? Which one were we on? Anybody remember Quell? Yeah, Quell, okay? So in the case, let's just say we were trading Quell, okay? And make believe this is a higher price stock. And then make believe this is the first day it closed at a new high. Well, if you really like the stock, then you add the caveat that the low has to be greater than the five-day simple moving average, okay? Everybody got that? 
and, I, and we don't have a name for that pattern yet. Somebody gave me a name a while back and I forgot it. So if you can give me the name again. Okay, here's another one of those Spocks, but the range is kind of narrow. So maybe Mike will go after this, but too narrow range for me to go after. But who knows, if it starts making new highs, an expansion of range, another SPOC, narrow range, another SPOC, narrow range, okay. Another SPOC, narrow range. <laughs> this one's got a crazy, it's probably another one of those SPOCs. The range was too narrow to get into it back here. It just kind of took off without us. This one is sort of interesting. And I was looking at it, but I think the volume is volume is kind of crazy. It has really light, light volume days and then kind of really big volume days. It's also kind of has a narrow range to it. So I would hold off on that. This looks okay, a little extreme and it's run higher, but maybe if it makes a really nice deep retracement, we might consider it, but it's kind of, the volume is kind of low. So I had to be careful on that one. This one looks okay. The problem is your trigger would be up around 30 something to change for buy it D. Now here's a case where maybe you can say, well, I kind of like it. I know you guys, and I don't know if any of the girls liked it last week, but I know some of you guys liked it. We could put that five day moving average in there and say, okay, well, I know it's more than $20 a share. I know it's more than $25 a share, which Big Dave seems to use his new rule lately. What if it closed at a new high and the low was greater than the moving average? Then it might be worth going after. So that might be something worth going after if that happens. Case in point, AVO. I was looking at this one today. I did not go long. Again, I got a lot going on. The volume is a little bit on the low side, but it does look pretty good. Oh, I know I didn't go long for sure because it didn't trigger, okay? The high is 1503, closed at 1487, but I was looking at this one, to, looking at this one today. But Dave, it's a food company. Yeah, but it's it's kind of got a little momentum to it. It's looking pretty good. I'm just noticing tonight the lows above the five SMA. It looks okay. All right. So maybe tomorrow I'll buy this one if it closes above 15 and a quarter. Okay. This one is eh, it's kind of funky. I don't know what's going on here. Plus the range looks like a huge range, but it's only one point range. Mike, would you buy that with a one point range? Not to put you on the spot. This one's kind of high priced. So maybe a secondary setup down the road. It looks like we're kind of getting into some thinner ones. One, two, three, nothing to do yet. No range either. 25 to 2540. Okay. Always pay attention to range. This one, high price. Let's see if it could rally, maybe on a pullback. No range here. This one had that one big huge day and then just kind of died out. So we'll have to see what happens. You know, maybe a close above this high here. IPOE, I wonder if that's an IPO fund or something. So we'd have to find out what that is. The Spox, the best Spox are the Spox where you can't figure out what the hell they're doing. And they come to find out they invest in electric car company, okay? Um, this doesn't jump out at me. But a close above that high would first day high would be an entry on that one. So I think you kind of get the idea here. And I don't know how many hours I spent. Probably spent 10 hours in the IPO course and or maybe five or six, and then another five or six hours weekly following up, looking for setups and all. So there's a lot more to it than just what I'm showing you, obviously. But if you kind of get the buy it B thing, I think you're well on your way. This one was kind of thin, if memory serves, back when it did a buy at B. Let's check. Yeah, it was just way too thin. And, you know, sometimes it pains me to walk away. And, and I wish it would have pained me today to walk away on a CVAC or tell myself, you know what, Dave, or self, the range is big, but you're going to just give it a big old fat wide stop, trade much, much fewer shares, and, and go have breakfast and forget about the trade, okay? But that is one thing sometimes you have to walk away from because this would have been a buy at B back here. But the volume was really, really light, so I had to walk away on that one. So again, I think everybody gets the idea of what's going on. We could probably spend hours going through all these and all. But you know, if you're doing your scans every day, it's like all the ones I said keep an eye on 
tomorrow, the next day or whatever, you just do your scans. And then right before the close, it's like, oh, well, look at this. This looks good. Okay, closing a new hearts. It's got a little bit of range. This looks fantastic. Well, the volume is really light on it. So you can't take that one. Okay. All right. Any questions or thoughts or anything on the IPOs? And I want to go back to Raj's question. He's been waiting patiently. Are gold and silver silver good to good in here? Well, I would I would hold off a little bit on silver, although I'm a little bummed out that I didn't take the Gato trade. It was a buy at B on this day here. I couldn't get excited. Oh, actually, it was a buy at B here, but it didn't have any range. Okay. So not enough. It, 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 this one was tricky. Not enough range. Plus it's silver. Plenty of range on this day, or at least more range. But it was kind of getting hard to get excited about silver. But now silver has taken off. So the stock took off before silver. The actual commodity, I would not be buying it just yet because you do have some overhead supply to deal with back here. But yeah, it's certainly improving. If it could push through this overhead supply, then it might be worth a shot. GLD, same sort of issue. You will have some overhead supply way back here to deal with. By the way, Raj, just keep in mind that I will trade commodities. I will trade Forex. Of course, Bitcoin, Bitcoin's been pretty efficient, uh, inefficient lately. It it's, uh, was making new highs today, I think. I know. Um, but Bitcoin will eventually become a more efficient market, but Forex is more efficient. I'm long the Euro, I've been long the Euro forever. You gotta be careful these more efficient markets. They're not gonna make these huge moves like we've had and and some of these fantastic IPOs that I'm showing you, okay? So I would, if it sets up that it's worth a shot, yeah, go ahead and take the trade, but, or maybe try to find, like if you're gonna trade like silver or gold, you know, try to find something like this Gato that's an IPO and hot. Just like I would uh, never say never, but I'm not a huge fan of trading banks. But I bought EBC on this day here, okay, because banks were hot lately. And I said, well, you know, it's worth a shot. I had to close my eyes and buy. I bought that stupid plastics company, PTVE. I couldn't get excited about buying a plastics company. But I said, you know what? Let's just let's just go ahead and close my eyes and buy. And I think I bought it on this day here or on this range breakout. I forget. But it was somewhere down in the lower teens. Okay. It as you can see, what did I say earlier? Sometimes they fail miserably at first and then they take off. But it's taken off. I've gotten my profits out. I know a lot of you guys are trading this one too, or still in it, I should say. We're in longer term trend following mode and just kind of following along. Okay. It's pulled back again. And hey, to use the word hope, but hopefully it takes off and goes on to make new highs. I never dreamed in my life I would buy a plastic fork company. <laughs> but you know what? I opened up the cabinet, as I said last week or week before, whenever I opened up my cabinet, it wasn't a junk drawer, just a drawer normally that just has a few things in it. And I had like 20 of these things just come flying out at me. So it's like, well, maybe everybody is ordering in more with this COVID or whatever. Who knows? Okay, Mike says he's willing to take a smaller smaller range if there's volume. All right, good point, Mike, good point. And that's the other thing too I've been looking at a lot lately is I'm not a huge fan of super high volume stocks, but if you get super high volume and structure like a pullback in these SPOCs or a buy at B with these SPOCs, they're worth going after because a lot of people are going after them. And especially like an opening gap reversal, at least nowadays, like that CVAC didn't really have the volume, okay? It worked out. I know it worked out. Knocked me out first. Where's my F-bomb? Hey, here's my F-bomb. Mike gave me this F-bomb. <laughs> if you want to send me any gifts, uh, my P.O. box is 298. If it's something big, I'll give you my home address. Just don't show up unannounced. <laughs> You'll catch me. You don't want to see the sausage being made. You don't see the man behind this curtain. <laughs> you don't want to see the sausage being made. It's not nearly as pretty as it is on TV. But I did a video just on that. But anyway, a good point. Uh, I'm willing to take a smaller range if there is volume on Gato. The volume was decent leading up to the buy at B, but on AVAN, there were days of less than 30K volume on days leading up to the trigger. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Yeah, you know, you're right. It's like, that's the problem is it, 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 I spent hours talking about that in the IPO course. Here's no range, here's no range, but also no volume. I mean, there's just look, look at that. That's a thousand shares. You know, you could go in 
and be a hundred percent of the volume. <laughs> you know, you you could have one of those little uh one of the little what do you call them things? Robin Hood accounts with your ten thousand oh, dollars. I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy a thousand shares of this. You know, you you have the whole uh the whole thing. What's funny is the reason I'm thinking of man behind the curtain. I have my screen screen behind it, so it's like early I had to go pee. It's like the man behind the curtain, the man behind the curtain. <laughs> You give them more leeway and range too. Yeah, see, that's the thing too. It's like I'm quick to, uh, quick, uh, just the opposite. I'm slow to make that change, but yeah, it's kind of killing me. I'm seeing some of these spots that are narrow range just blast off and take off. And so I've been a little bit more lenient on that, but I've been kind of slow to turn. And I don't want to chase my own tail and change up a whole bunch of parameters just for the church of what's happening now. But I agree with you on that. Good point, Mike. All right, any more questions? Not really any of your patterns, but can you explain DNKN? That never seems to be a company flatline like this. DNKN. It's Duncan, right? DNKN. It's not coming up. Do you have another symbol for me? Or give me the company name. Is it Duncan? Does Duncan even trade anymore? Duncan? Nope. Wait, hang on. <laughs> 